friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are all of you today? Excellent. Well, today we're going to take a little road trip from Waco back up to Dallas where I landed and we're going to go to a cemetery and go pay homage, pay our respects to who we all know as the Von Erich family. Actually, they're the Atkinson family. Fritz Von Erich changed his name when he was a professional wrestler to portray a Nazi wrestler, a bad guy, and eventually would form world-class wrestling, would have six sons, five of his sons would pass away before Fritz, but all five of those sons would at one time or another be um, in the wrestling business and would have some sort of catastrophic um, story to their life. So today we're going to go visit the grave of the great Von Erich family. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And David Posthumus, today is your Patreon sunglass vlog. Let's go. So we're heading out just east of Dallas to Grove Hill Cemetery, the hilltop section. All right, we made it up to the hilltop section of the cemetery, and they're not all necessarily right beside each other, but they are all in the same section behind me, so I'll show you around. So as soon as you park right here, right below this tree, is the very first son. I mentioned they had six sons. One did not wrestle, it was Jackie. Little Jackie right here died when he was six years old. Um, his father was actually Jack Atkinson, and he went by Fritz Von Erich. He was a traveling wrestler after, he was originally a football player, and then became a traveling wrestler. The family had a mobile home that they attached to the back of their car. And one day when little Jackie was coming home from school one day, he was going around um, the trailer by the trailer hitch, and I guess touched an exposed wire and was electrocuted and fell face first into some melting snow and ended up drowning. And his son, the only son left, Kevin, says this was when his father's complete mentality changed. He said he went from being a really nice guy to almost feeling like he needed to make the world suffer as much as he did. And that character, him being that Nazi character, he would be one of the most hated people in the ring. Kevin said that was always horrible for the kids because they said if we went to a wrestling match and we heard cheering, we knew that dad was losing. Dad loved to be a villain and made his name doing it. Now, right here we have David, David Von Erich, the Yellow Rose of Texas. He was really the, he was really the one that I think hurt the most because he had the most potential. He was the best wrestler of all the sons. He was really following in Fritz's footsteps. All the sons did. In Texas, they was extremely well known because world-class wrestling was uh, broadcast on TV. Fritz was probably the first guy to put microphones in the ring so you could hear what was going on in the ring. And his son, David, was really the most successful. Now, what ended up happening to David was really sad. He was looking kind of sick and he was supposed to go to Japan to wrestle. And there was one rule that Fritz had, you don't miss a show. And he was kind of complaining about being sick, he'd been thrown up, and Fritz said, you don't miss the show. So David went, even Kevin said the night before, he said, we were sitting around the table, and I looked at him, I said, I just, got, I have a bad feeling about this. So a couple of nights later, the booker for World Class Wrestling got a phone call. Um, it was All Japan Pro Wrestling saying, David Von Erich found dead in hotel and that was all they said. So they contacted Bruiser Brody, another wrestler who they knew was out there, and found out that Bruiser Brody had went in the hotel room and found David, and Bruiser Brody said that David was reaching for the phone. Now, rumors spread immediately that it was um, painkiller overdose, because you know all these wrestlers had a lot of um, injuries, a lot of pain, and they thought that's what it was. And originally, that's kind of what the rumor was, and Fritz just said, hey, I want an autopsy done. Whatever the autopsy finds is what we're gonna tell people. We're gonna be truthful about this. 
Because there's like a rumor that Bruiser Brody, since he was the first one in there, took all the pills and threw them away. But what the autopsy showed was that, unfortunately, David had had, um, I believe his intestines had split and opened up and basically his body filled up with the blood and he he died. So it was, it was a natural thing. It was, you know, it was like a unfortunate, horrible way to go. But they said this sent Texas pretty much into a tailspin. They said um, you could you went to like the mall afterward and people were like crying. It was like it was a serious thing. And when they had the funeral, four to five thousand people showed up. They had to move a television outside and speakers so that they could all hear and see some of the service. Now, if you turn around and you go right behind us, you have two of the other. Von Eric brothers. On the left here is Michael, and on the right here is Chris. Both had really sad stories because they both, in a weird way, kind of mirrored each other's problem. Was for wrestlers, they were smaller than your average wrestler. Michael, I would say, was more built like a basketball player, and Chris had health issues from the time he was young. It stunted his growth. He had asthma, so they said he had brittle bones. He was only five five, and at the age of 21, he ended up committing suicide. Now, before he passed away, Michael also had committed suicide. What happened to him was when his brother David died, he decided he was going to take on um, filling those shoes. And he just wasn't quite the wrestler. He didn't have quite the potential. He didn't have quite the agility or the athleticism to do it. But he had all the heart and wanted to. And while he was wrestling in Tel Aviv, he dislocated a shoulder and they took him to the hospital. They had the surgery and then when he had recovered, he flew back to the US and he ended up getting a staph infection. And this staph infection led to um, something called um, toxic shock syndrome and his body started shutting down. And they said he was pretty much gonna die that night and they even put it out on the, on the airwaves like pray for uh, Michael Von Eric because it's you know he's probably not gonna make it through the night the hospital said people were calling offering to donate organs to help save him and the chaplain um, since I said that the the family was so beloved in Texas the chaplain came and did a prayer and he read a prayer um, stating basically something that's in the Bible that says um, I'll take care of all good men and they said Kevin said he was in the room and he said the chaplain lifted the Bible over his head and said, this is your word, God. Make good on your word and slam the Bible down. And Kevin said, not more than 20 seconds later, the door opened and the doctor walked in and said, we don't really know what's happened, but it looks like he's gonna be okay. And he, he recovered, but Kevin Von Erich said that his brother was always different after this. He said he had like a hollow, gaunt look to him. He never, never really regained um, his form and he said, he would start having weird episodes. And he, Kevin said he thought it was possible brain damage from that because he said he would start, uh, Michael would be out in public. He said he would start attacking a, um, a light pole or he would start fighting a traffic signal. He said one time he watched him go and attack a parked car with nobody in it. He said just kind of weird things. And so he started abusing uh, pills got pulled over one night under the suspicion of DUI and having possession of marijuana and the next night he was supposed to wrestle and he never showed up and since Fritz's rule was you never miss a show everybody panicked and they knew his mindset wasn't very good they sent out a message over the radio and television waves um, asking for any help finding Michael Von Erich and two or three days later they found him he had overdosed out near a lake. He had taken himself out there, zipped himself up in a sleeping bag, and overdosed and died. Pretty sad. So then Chris, Chris tried to take on the family business and try and help the Von Erich name live on. And unfortunately, like I said, he was he was the smaller brother. He had had his growth stunted. He just he wanted to be as good as his brothers but he just no matter how much he trained he just didn't he just couldn't get there and he ended up breaking his arm in a match and fell into a depression Kevin said one night he called me and said hey I want my 
VCR I loaned you back. And he said, well, can't this wait till the morning? And Chris said, no, I want it back and, and, and hung up on him. And then Kevin said about 15 minutes, Chris came out on his four wheeler and was circling around the house. And then he took off and I knew that he had a place up on a hill that he liked to go to to think. And I went up there and he was up there and he said, well, Kev, did you find my note? And he said, I said, what, Chris, are you gonna kill yourself? You can't do that, you got a lot to live for. Chris said, oh, I don't know. And uh, Kevin said, come on, man, promise me you don't wanna do this. Promise me you won't go out this way. You can't do that after how Michael went out. And he said, okay, I promise I won't do anything. And Kevin said, I went down the hill, went back to the house and dad was up and I went up to dad and I said, does Chris often write suicide notes? And Fritz said, you better get back up there. And he said, when I got up there, he must have just shot himself because he said, I heard gurgling and I ran up to him. I said, oh God, Chris, what did you do? And he said, I put my hand under his head to lift him up and I, my thumb went in the hole in the back of his head and Chris died. So that was, <laughs> the David died in 84, Michael died in 87, Chris died in 91. And then of course, Carrie, the one that I knew the most from being a WWE fan or WWF when I was a kid, Kerry Von Erich. We knew him as the Texas Tornado, but he was plagued by drugs and alcohol. He was, after David passed away, he challenged Ric Flair for the title, won the title, and was a hero. And because of his fame, they said he started hanging out with like a rock star type lifestyle, hanging out with famous people. And they said you could tell, it wasn't anything spoken, but you could see that he was using drugs. And he got into a really bad motorcycle accident and lost part of his leg, part of his foot from basically like the, the shin down. And they said that this was something that um, was sworn, anybody that knew the Atkinson family, Von Erichs, that for like five years, everybody was sworn to secrecy that this could not get out, that he had this. So he would wrestle with a prosthetic. They said actually when that first happened, uh, one of the guys that went to visit him said, it looked like an alligator had chewed on his leg. So even though he told people he never had it amputated, he did. And he got addicted to painkillers during this time and he also ended up getting arrested multiple times and on the last time he was on probation already and was afraid that this was going to send him to prison. So apparently he asked his wife to agree to take him back when he got out of jail and if so he would go turn himself in and serve his time and she said she couldn't promise that. So he got in his Jeep, drove out to visit his father right here, Fritz von Erich, went out to visit his father and um, his dad was out laying a driveway with cement. Kevin called him and said, Dad, I need to talk to you. And Fritz said, I don't have time to talk and hung up on him. Kevin said, I tried calling back. I was gonna tell him, hey, if Kerry comes out there, don't let him leave because he's not in a good mindset. And Kerry showed up, hugged his dad and said, I love you, Dad, and then got back in his Jeep and took off out into the field. Fritz went inside after he finished and waited for Kerry to come back and he never came back and then he noticed that his gun was gone. He went out to the field and found Kerry's Jeep Wrangler out there and saw one glove on the seat and he knew what had happened. He knew that was, that was the hand that Kerry was gonna be firing the gun with and he said he walked a few feet past some trees and laying there with the most peaceful look on his face was Kerry Von Erich, he had shot himself in the heart. So, poor Fritz Von Erich had lost five sons. Five sons. You know, in the time that I hang out with my grandpa, there's something that I always hear my grandpa say, almost every time I see him, he says, you never wanna bury your kids. There's nothing in the world that feels worse than burying your kids. I can't imagine having to go through that five times. And then unfortunately, Fritz had a pretty sad ending himself. You'll see right next to Fritz and Carrie's grave is Fritz's wife and the mother of the Von Erichs, Doris. And then poor Fritz, after he and Doris eventually got a divorce after all of this, hard to believe that you could stay together through so much and then, um, then eventually separate, but they did. 
and um, Kevin said that his father ended up getting brain cancer and one day pulled a gun out on him and he said I could see it wasn't my dad anymore it was it was the cancer taking over but he pulled a gun out and said you're too afraid to die if, if you were like your other brothers you you wouldn't be so afraid and he said dad it takes takes strength to live not to die and um, he basically said, Kevin said, I basically just ran out of the room before he could fire because I wasn't going to let cancer determine my, my ending. But he said he was, he was glad when the cancer finally took Fritz's life because he said he had, he had been tortured throughout his life with all of this. And then the ending of just losing his, basically losing his faculties and losing his mind was just, that was just the end of it all. God, pretty sad. Now there is one, well, there are a couple of bright things to mention in this. For one, that nobody can ever take away the history that the Von Erichs brought to wrestling. Their name is synonymous with wrestling. I mean, anybody in Texas knows that name, Von Erich. But the name lives on because Carrie's daughter, Lacey Von Erich, is a wrestler. Uh, Kevin's two sons go by the Von Erich brothers. So there are Von Erichs out there wrestling and the legacy has been purchased by WWE. All of the uh, film and everything, the whole history of it was purchased. So those can still be seen pretty much as long as WWE is still around. They will have that in their archives. Sad they couldn't all be buried together. It's very sad. It's almost like you feel like there should be like a family plot with a statue of them all or something like that. But at least they're all kind of together. Rest in peace, in a better place. Then I just noticed this, I'd really like to include this, I, I hadn't heard about this, but right next to David Von Erich is his little baby daughter, Natasha, baby girl of David and Candy Atkinson. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I wanna thank Susan Osborne and Nancy Patterson for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching. We will see you all again very soon. Have a great night and goodbye.